The Ordinary Discussion Podcast. Because when I read Revelations, I read those scriptures where it says Jesus destroys all these enemies by the sword of his mouth. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be great. I'm going to get to watch. And here's my son going, no, Dad, you're going to have to fight. Let's do this. So on that topic of, of um, people coming to Christ, have you seen... Uh, have you guys seen many salvations from your story? Yeah, seen a lot. Um, we've gotten to do, obviously, with our ministry, we do these things called Heaven Live events where we just we go around the country. We've even been around the world where what we do is we just have an event where we have worship, we share our testimony, and then at the end of each event, we just take time to pray with and like just be there for the people. And I remember like one that was really significant for me was when we went to Singapore. Um, I think we were able to like share our story. I think it was like 10,000 people or something. Almost at one there. Yeah, yeah. And it was so cool because you got to witness like just God's spirit move, whether it was through worship, through just talking about heaven and seeing, like, the many different people that chose to give their lives to Christ just because we were saying, this is what heaven is like. This is who is in heaven. Mm -hmm. This is how you get to meet him. And that's one that really stuck out to me. And just a few other instances where I've been able to talk with different um, kids. Like, I'd have kids walk up to me and tell me, like, they basically chose to follow Jesus or a lot of people who have shared like with our story that it's been able to help them understand a lot more. Like, yeah, that's just been really cool. You know, we've had people confirm it, talk to us. We run into them all the time. Um, But even recently I I had a friend I was working with and he says, you know, I've never really been close to anyone that's semi-famous said, okay, and so I look you up on the internet, and there's stuff about you all over the internet. I go, yeah, <laughs> you, and, and like, he, Be he's, what you read. oh, yeah, he's kind of <laughs> like you. He goes, they don't know you at all. I go, yeah, yeah, welcome to my life, but, but we got to looking again at, like, uh, Amazon, you know, there's over 17,000 reviews of Heaven is for Real on Amazon. That's, like, wow. unheard of, what people put, in yeah, and, 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 like, like I tell him, well, you know, I didn't do that. God is doing this. God could move it across the world. And, yeah, we wrote the book. We put the story. But God's the one that's spread it. Yeah. But I can say this. You know, we've had a lot of people because of um, maybe the publicity, jealousy. I don't know. But we've had some friends leave us over heaven. Oh, really? Friend. And that's been really painful. That's the hardest thing. I, I think... You know, for me, I I knew critics would come. I knew people would um, attack us. But when when some friends chose to kind of slide away rather than stand up for us, now we had other lots of other friends stand up for us. Mm-hmm. That's been the most painful. That's been the hardest on us. And I was going through a period of time in my church where I was experiencing that, and um, a lot of other Christian ministries were putting all things on their radio programs and TV programs, saying Cole had said, said things he had never said. And all this stuff was going on, and my neighbor was upset because we had lots, lots of threats at the time, and so we had to have security cameras. And he's in my gra- garage cussing at me. Do I need to get security cameras what, now you, because of you? I know, I, I know I'm interrupting. I'm sorry. But you had th- – what, what were the th- – like, why would people threaten you because you said you went to heaven? His life was threatened. We, we had five what, advanced what, what where people were – like, why? Why do crazy people do crazy things? Uh, wow. But we, 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 we went through all that. People threatening my son's life, threatening me. And, um, and so I was at a really kind of, God, <laughs> was this worth it? You know? And we, we, we had, like you say, some people of prophetic gifts speak into our lives that also told us, hey, God shared this with me. You know, like I told you about the strangers coming to my doorsteps. To move me forward, people, God used people like that with some prophetic gifts in their lives to help me, when the, when the decision time came, make the right decision. Yeah. And one of these persons, his name was Tom, that God had used a couple times in my life, said, you know, God sent me to tell you this. You're struggling right now, aren't you? And you're really questioning, was this worth writing it with all the 
everything happening to you? I go, yeah, I've had some hard days. He goes, well, God wants me to tell you. Now, I don't know how to validate this, and I can't validate it. But he said, but God wants you to know that he's already saved 150 million people with this already, with the book, with the movie, and where it's gone into the world. Wow. So he wants you to know that not only did you do what he told you to do, but this has been worth it. And I can't validate that, but I can tell you other things he said at the time that, again, kind of like my son on an earthly level that no one could know that I did know. But I needed that because I, whenever you take a stand for God like we have or even at your workplace or whatever, you're going to have people come against you. And, and this is something that Satan did from the very beginning. Remember in Acts chapter 4, what did the Pharisees say to, to, to Peter and John? Well, you can believe in Jesus, but just keep it to yourself. That's right. You know, don't share it out here, and don't 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 make us look bad. And and if you do that, we'll leave you alone. That that story has been pitched by Satan from the very beginning of the gospel, and it's alive and well today. And then if you don't follow, what did they do? They whipped them. They beat them. They you will you you will have people come against you. They'll threaten you. They'll do whatever. They'll stop being your friends. They'll spread rumors about you. Whatever you want to name it. If you just, yeah, you can have faith, but keep it to yourself. That's yeah. not what God wants you to do. Yeah, well, what did they say in response to that? Do you remember? Who? Peter. And oh, Paul. yeah. Well, he said, well, judge for yourselves. You know, should we do what God told us to do or what you want us to do? What yeah. do you think God's opinion is on this? And obviously. And then he said, we can't help but speak about what we have seen, seen and heard. heard. There yeah. you go. That's a, I love exactly. it. It's one of my favorite verses. Ex- exactly. And yeah. so. Isn't that like one of the theme verses? of Well, Acts 4.13 is our. Keystone verse, which yeah. is when they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized they were unschooled, ordinary men, they took note that these men had been with Jesus, mm-hmm. um, which is why we point people to Jesus, because mm-hmm. people take note. Yeah, right? exactly. And then and then later on, I always point out that when they were told not to speak about Jesus, they said, we can't help but speak about what we've seen and heard. Mm-hmm. And I believe when you encounter Jesus, that's who you become. You you can't help it. No, right? yeah. And mm-hmm. so you encounter Jesus in, in a very unique way. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that's your expression of that verse mm-hmm. is I can't help but speak about what I've seen and heard. Sure. Yeah. Well, another thing uh, about just that story in Acts that sticks out to me is the fact there was one, like, senior Pharisee <clears throat> that was basically, like, presiding over the council, like, helping. And when they sent, I think it was Peter and John, they sent him out. He basically was like, let's, like, do what we need to do, but... If this is truly from God, what can we do to stop it? Like, yeah. yeah. And it was kind of cool, like, just reading through that and seeing that, like, obviously, it continued. Like, it didn't die. Mm-hmm. It didn't fizzle out. Like, he said, if it wasn't from God, yeah, if it's not God this will just go away. go away. Yeah. yeah. It certainly is not. And it didn't, yeah. The yeah. church is still here how many thousand years later? Yeah. I yeah, know. Yeah. Well, I mean, so, I mean, I asked the question. I already knew the answer about people coming to Christ because— uh, as like I said, as I was prepping for this podcast, I was listening to one that you did, and the host was like at the beginning of the podcast, he was like, "Yeah, I had like three friends come to Jesus uh, that that were far from him uh, just recently watching the movie Yada Yada Yada." I thought that like, hey, if it's if it was one life, any of the hardship that that was yeah. created is worth it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so I think that's great. Um, Let's have some. Let's let's kind of wrap up here with some uh, heaven questions. Right. I know we we hit a bunch on the last podcast. We may <laughs> hit on some of the same. Uh, some of them are my own little. Uh, I have a few that I just curious about myself. Yeah. Um, and I know you were young, mm-hmm. and I think that's important to remember. A lot of people have a lot of criticism, and and I know that it's one of your responses. <laughs> like, I was looking at it through the lens of a, you're three or four. I was three, like, about ready to turn four. Yeah. So a month yeah. before his fourth birthday, yeah. Yeah, so looking through it through the lens of a three-year-old, right? But do you re- were there hobbies in heaven? Well, um, I just remember as, like, as a kid in heaven, like, I went to school. Um, so, like, you can't escape school regardless of if you're in heaven or on earth. Um, one of the benefits of that is Jesus was my teacher in heaven, so... It's one of the few times I remember, like, enjoying homework, which is very (laughs) weird. Um, But another thing, like, with the other kids, like, we would just play together in heaven. And in heaven, no one was ever bored. Like, everyone always had something to do. Now, with heaven, another thing, I got to talk with one of my buddies. Um, He actually, uh, I got married this past summer, and he was like our wedding photographer and one thing he loves to do is he loves to cook 
And I remember he talked to me. He's like, do you think I'll be able to cook in heaven? I'm like, well, I ate food in heaven. Someone had to make it. Oh, that would be pretty cool. Because little things like that, like God made us for different things. Or mm-hmm. he wired us to enjoy certain things. Like things that I enjoy are going to be very different than things you enjoy. There might be some similarities. Um, I'm not really an outdoorsman, um, even though my appearance might look yeah, like I look am. Yeah, you look like it. Um, you can <laughs> thank my wife for that. Uh, she's the one that loves to hike, loves to camp. Um, I finally went on a pig hunting trip because my dad convinced my wife to go. So my wife's like, okay, you're coming with me. <laughs> I got a great daughter-in-law, by the way. <laughs> yeah. but you do, you do. <laughs> little, little things like that where um, I do believe that, like, we get stuff to do in heaven. Like, There are a lot of things that God made for earth that were good. And obviously, here on earth, if it's good here, why would it not be good in heaven? Because God said it was good. But Yeah, Yeah, I feel silly even asking the question. Because in my mind, like I think of heaven, and Mm -hmm. this is what I want it to be. I mean, this isn't like a buzzkill for me. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. it's like, I'm going to be before the throne worshiping him, Mm -hmm. right? It's like, going to be in all of him day and night. That's enough. That's Mm -hmm. like, let me do that for eternity. Um, but then I hear your, your experience in heaven. And then it brings up other questions. Like, Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's plenty of that, but it sounds like that based on your experience that there's also, uh, similar lives as there Mm -hmm. are here. Well, I try to explain heaven, like to people who don't know much about heaven or just trying to wrap their mind around it. Um, that would be all of us, but you that don't know uh, much about heaven. <laughs> there have been other people that have had heaven right, experiences. Right. There's very few um, But I just try to um, just try and give examples or heaven is like this. Um, and one of the best ways I describe heaven to people is think of it as it's like a perfect version of earth. Because mm. in heaven, there's stuff to do. You're not just sitting on a cloud, playing a harp, singing the whole time. You're not just doing that. There is always music going on in heaven, like constantly, all the time. Um, But there's also other things. There's grass, there's trees, there's people, there's animals, there's angels, there's food, there's buildings, there's skies, there's water. Like almost everything we have down here on earth is up in heaven, plus more. Like it is, yeah. Well, the very question you asked him, you know, I told you about Tom. I was traveling and I got focused on this thing that Colton said too. I remember sitting in an airport and I love architecture and some buildings I was looking at and I was like, wow, you know, how did they do that? How did they make those arches? How's it holding that up? And finally, I'm kind of having a conversation with God. I said, God, you know, you put this desire to build in me, but then you called me to be a pastor. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I said, yes, but I still want to build. When I get to heaven, can I build stuff? I remember praying that and when I told you about how Tom, Tom came and said, you've been struggling. Yeah, yeah. Well, he said, he came first and says, well, I have two messages for you. And the first message was, well, you've been praying to God about what you want to do in heaven. And I'm sitting here like, how do you know that? Well, you've been asking God that you want to build stuff in heaven. Oh, wow. I go, <laughs> I'm sitting here like, okay. He goes, well, God says, no, you're not going to build it, but you're going to get to design it. He's going to let you be the designer. I'm like, that's cool. Okay. better. (laughs) Yeah. And and so these people with prophetic gifts and things like that, God has used them in my life to kind of speak to me. But I was thinking the exact same thing. And I'm like, what what, what is God going to let me design when I get to heaven? That's going to be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully my house. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I think he might do a better job. Yeah. Who knows? Well, whatever. I'm just, yeah, I just, I'd be happy to be there. I I will be happy when I'm there. I know I'll be there. Um. So one of the big, um, it, it, it seems, uh, based on comments mm-hmm. on our last podcast mm-hmm. and some other comments from podcasts and videos that you guys have done, mm-hmm. is this battle of Armageddon seems to be a big, uh, mm-hmm. a big conversation point in, in, in that. So you, you mentioned that you saw it. Mm-hmm. So there's, there's a couple things here, and uh, you can answer them in whatever order, but First off, there seems to be a lot of confusion around, well, how did you see the final battle when it hasn't taken place yet? Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was one question. The other is you saw your father there mm-hmm. in it, mm-hmm. right? I'd love to hear more about that. And just uh, in general, I'd like to hear some more on that. And then 
Uh, Todd, I'd love to hear any thoughts that you have on it as well. Yeah. Uh, so uh, one thing that I like to describe to people is when it comes to heaven, heaven is outside of time. Like with heaven, uh, if you read scripture, you can see like God giving so many prophecies in the Old Testament that happen almost like word for word in New Testament or just later in the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. And for God to be so accurate with his descriptions or with his prophecies, um, at least where my mind goes is, well, he had to see it in order to know that. And with my personal experience in heaven, when I was up there, I got to see things in my dad's past. Like when he was around like eight years old with his great grandpa, Pop, when he was on earth, I saw stuff present day. Uh, There was like one moment where I was standing next to Jesus and I got to see like my dad was preaching and I almost saw Jesus like shoot power down to him. Super cool. Um, (laughs) And then obviously I got to see the final battle, the battle of Armageddon. And what I remember is it was Satan, the monsters and the bad people versus Jesus, the angels and the good people. And... um, yeah, I just remember it being this massive battle. Um, the women and children, we were kind of off to the side just, like, witnessing it. We didn't participate in the battle. But I just remember seeing, like, I do remember seeing my dad fighting in the battle. And with what the people on, like, God's side, what they were fighting with was, like, swords and bows and arrows. And it was kind of cool because you got to see, like, just this massive battle. And obviously Jesus wins, but... Um, for me, yeah, the best way how I describe it is God created time. He's not a subject to it. So that's why, at least with my experience, I was able to see and experience all that stuff because heaven is where God is. God's not subject to time. So in that battle, so you said it was a major battle. Was it even like a fight or was it just like a, a bulldoze? Like, was there actually opposition? Um, like, could the forces was, of evil even like I think there from was what a you lo- saw? I know you were three, four years old. Well, so far, um, there's really only been one thing that I've like seen. Um, one one movie series I really like is The Lord of the Rings. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing I kind of I would say maybe shows a little bit of light on it or whatever is whenever you see it's in the second movie uh, the two towers where Gandalf the white and like all the Rohan or whatever, like the guys on the horses when they ride down the hill, just this bright white light. And then they just completely mop the floor with the enemy. It's going to be a lot cooler than that, but that's like the only thing I can think of. That's like what you saw, even a glimpse. Like when God shows up, there's no competition. You're going against the Lord of all creation. And the fact that we get to like, join in on that that's pretty cool and there was um and you may not just this is my curiosity sorry if this is boring to you guys listening but no casualties on god's side well i didn't i don't know or i don't remember um but in my mind i kind of think like if god raised me from the dead once yeah (laughs) i think he can do it again if anything were to happen but I don't remember too much about that. I just remember the battle took place, and Jesus won. Yeah, you're bringing up the battle. This is one of the first things where he really pushed me. Because when I read Revelations, I read those scriptures where it says Jesus destroys all these enemies by the sword of his mouth, and I'm like, oh, this is going to be great. I'm going to get to watch. And here's my son going, no, Dad, you're going to have to fight. I remember... We were, we were just driving past the cemetery, yeah. and this is where the conversation starts. And, and we, we, we do things that would trigger memories that he would say things, and all of a sudden the conversation would start. And, and you know, back to that day where, where I would have to read in Scripture, then he would prove me wrong. I remember reading and reading, and if you read Revelation seventeen fourteen, it almost says exactly word for word where Jesus, the angels, and the elect, which that would probably be a little kid's description of the good people, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Fight, and yeah. you look what they have to stand up against and what they have to fight. Yep. And I'm sitting there reading that verse, and I read it to Colton, and Colton says, yeah, I know, Dad, that's what I told you. And I'm sitting there like, 
I'm wrong again, and here he's proven just yeah. right what the scripture said. But here's another thing, too, which is interesting. I've had a lot of women talk to me about that, upset. Why don't we get to fight? Why is it just the men? I mean, mad at me for what Colton <laughs> says about the fight. Shoot the messenger, not me. Exactly. I'm like, <laughs> point it back to Colton. Yeah, go find Colton, please. You know, but no, I, but I, I can just say this to you. You know, we would never envision children on a battlefield, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And why would we, 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 we protect them? Because they would be precious to us, right? Yeah. And so I tell these ladies, well, <laughs> God puts you and the children in such a precious, important, you know, state that he's yeah. going to protect you. But here's another thing, too. To, I've had men and women say, well, what if you die? And, and I, I've kind of thought about that, like with Colton, too. Um. He was being interviewed once about what Satan looks like, and when he f- finally started talking about it later, I, I forget where this interview was, but someone asked him, well, Colton, were you afraid when you saw Satan? And he was like, well, I didn't see him. I was shown an image of him. And then he talks about wait, wait, that. Where, I'm sorry. Where did, in, in the Battle of Armageddon is where you? No. Uh, no. This is sometime other. in heaven. Uh, so when it comes to, like, different characters from the Bible or different people I met and experienced, like, meeting in heaven— uh, there was a moment or time where uh, Jesus actually showed me an image of Satan, where what I remember is he had like two forms that he switched between. And Satan, he either appeared as like a seven-headed dragon with ten crowns. It makes no sense, but it's in the Bible. Um, but I remember like that just always racked my head like, how is he? He has seven heads but ten crowns. That doesn't make sense. Um, but the other form that I saw Satan as is he looked like an archangel. So, um, when I was younger or I used my dad as a measuring stick cause I didn't know, Oh, that's five feet. That's 10 feet. That's I'm only five, inches. six, as you can probably tell I'm pretty <laughs> short, but I remember when I would describe like angels or the angels that look like humans, when I described them to my dad, I'm like, well, the angels, they look like us, but they aren't us. Like, you can tell a difference. They're, and I told my dad, well, normal angels, they're about one and a half times the size of you. The archangel Gabriel, he's a little bit bigger than them. And then the archangel Michael is twice the size of you. Really? And the other cool thing about Michael is he had a huge flaming sword. Uh, the blade of the sword was, I told my dad, well, the blade of the sword is as tall as you. The handle is long as your arm, and it's always on fire. And in heaven, I do remember, like, I asked, can I have one? (laughs) I was told no, because I'd be too dangerous. Um, But with the other image of Satan that I saw, he looked like an archangel. And But instead of having a light above his head like everyone in heaven did, he had two horns coming from his forehead. And with how big he was, like, he was almost eye to eye with the archangel Michael. But I remember also saying, but if the two of them got in a fight, my money's on Michael. Because you have the worship pastor, a former worship pastor of heaven, versus the commander of the Lord's armies. They're like the second in command after Jesus. Like, yeah. my money's on the warrior. But, but the it, other thing, too, that he was being asked, well, when, when you saw Satan, were you afraid? And I mm-hmm. remember what he he says, I was standing next to Jesus. When you're standing next to Jesus, you're not afraid of anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So think about this. You're on our front line, and Jesus is your commander, and you know he's with you and for you. And when you get to fight, you know what perfect love it says in the Bible, what? Cast out what? Fear. Mm -hmm. And you're feeling the presence of God. You know he loves you, and you're going into battle. That's the one time you're going to go into battle, and I'm pretty sure there's going to be no fear. Yeah. And matter of fact, I remember when I first thought about it, I was a little bit apprehensive, maybe even in, in my humanity, a little bit scared. But after all the threats and all the things we've gone through, I'm like, God, I'm looking forward to that battle one day. Oh, I. Uh, uh. Matter of fact, if you could put me in front of it, there's a few demons I would personally like to be lined up in front of, please, you know. Um, and, and I ask other men here, too, you know. If you've given your life to Jesus Christ, and we know what it's like to be persecuted down here and stand up for your faith, what a great way to end it, to be a part of that instead of just be a spectator. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, to me, in my personal life and, and, and walk, it, it's become something that I've had to grow into, but now I'm just really thankful that I'm going to get to be there, not have yeah. to be there. I'm going to get to be there. Yeah. I mean, I think it's amazing he saw you. I mean, that's like... Oh, yeah, I asked him. So, but here's another thing, too. So I, I I asked him, so was this my future self or my present self? He says, no, Dad, you got wings and all. And so, okay, so this is my future self. So I'm like, am I taller in heaven? And he's like, no, Dad, you're still short. <laughs> <laughs> that, I remember asking him that, too. So when he saw him, I'm like, am I taller? <laughs> he's like, no, Dad, you're still short. <laughs> Well, not to, I just can't, my mind can't help me. We'll wrap this up in just a minute, but my mind ha- can't help go back to the, the picture of Satan thing. Mm-hmm. Why, I don't know, you're four at the time, I get it. Mm-hmm. But why do you think you were shown a picture of Satan in heaven? Like, what would be the purpose of that? Um, Can you reconcile that? I don't know, to be honest. Um mm-hmm. Like, I don't remember the conversation that led up to it, why he showed me it, or whatever. Um, The one thing that I think is kind of nice is with some of my experiences in heaven, it makes reading the Bible a lot easier for me. Because when you get into reading, like, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, and you read, like, all this amazing things about, like, the throne room of heaven, everything, I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember seeing that. Um... Now, it does make you a little bit jealous, right? A whole I mean, lot. I That's mean, you're sitting there like, d- this yeah. makes sense to you? And he's like, oh, yeah. I'm oh, like, yeah. but really? It's been little things yeah. like that where I don't know the exact reason why I was shown it, but what I've come to, like, appreciate about it is the fact that, like, I can read the scripture and know, oh, this is who God is referencing. Or, like, when Revelation, like, all the different beasts and stuff, like, you have... Like the red beast, you have this beast, you have this one, you have this one. It's like, okay, who's the devil? Like, is this just a demon? Is this, what is this? Is this an allegory? Like, is this supposed to represent something? But the thing that made it nice is um, when reading through Revelation, whenever I see seven-headed dragon with ten crowns, it's like, there's Satan. Okay, what happens to you? Oh, ha, nice. (laughs) Um, So... All in all, like, the only thing I can think of is it it gives me comfort because his end's already written. Yeah. Well, I think the other thing, too, that we, we need to do in church better, and I think we, and then Colton's told people this before, Satan's not in hell yet. Mm-mm. You know, he, he's not, he, he's been cast down to earth. We we have a spiritual enemy. When, when people rise yeah. up against the church and they, they, they have this hatred toward Christians. Now I see Christians like moms and dads being labeled Christian fascists in the news, and we're seeing this everywhere now. You know, the woke culture coming up, and they have this hatred towards Christianity. Well, who's behind all that? Yeah. And we need to realize Satan is here, and he's moving, and, and like the Bible says, he's the spirit at work in the hearts of these people that are against us. And here's one of the things I think. When, when Jesus started his ministry, he was baptized, and it's the one time in Scripture where all three of the Godhead show up. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit all mm-hmm. at the same place. Yep. I mean, what a significant event, right? Yep. Well, what's, what's, what's the very first thing on the next story? The Holy Spirit leads Jesus out into the wilderness to face who? Satan. Bingo. Mm-hmm. And I think is one of the things in, in the church today, when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, he loves you. But, man, there's an enemy that comes with the package deal. Yeah. And we don't prepare people for... When you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you know, Satan, might not, you might not have sensed him torpedoing your life. You might not have sensed him being against you. But once you make a decision for Jesus, that's a decision against Satan, and you have an enemy now. Yeah. And I know we don't like to talk about that, but I think we, we need to be more honest with ourselves about it, too. Yeah. I mean, it reminds me of the, the, you know, the armor of Christ. Like we talk about the battle of Armageddon, but mm-hmm. you, there's a battle on earth. You mentioned, Absolutely. Like, you mentioned you can't wait to fight demons. I mean, we, we are, we are on a battle field right now Yeah, and uh, we don't have to wait until that day to fight. Right? No. Mm-hmm. As men, I think so many of us are sitting back very passive <clears throat> and, and, um, yeah, there's a different stance, I believe, that, that we should be taking, and it just goes right along with what you just said, Todd. Well, you know, like Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is forcefully advancing. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's not passively advancing, and the only way it's going to advance 
is for people to stand up with boldness. You know, what I, we, we talked about Peter and John when they were brought before the Sanhedrin, when they were told, don't preach in this name anymore. Yeah. And what did they do? God, give us boldness. Yeah. And they praise God for the chance to be able to suffer in his name, but give us boldness so we can do this more and more. And I think for men today, for Christians today, that's something that I'm not saying be offensive, but to be bold. Mm -hmm. And and there's a standard there that a lot of people will say, well, you offend me, so you better keep it to yourself. Well, now I have a choice to make. Do I do what you want me to do, or do I want to do what God wants me to do? And just like like what Peter and John said to the Sanhedrin. Well, you know, I, I'm one of those persons who will say, I don't care. I'm not really sorry this offends you. I <laughs> really don't care this offends you. I'm still going to be bold. Yeah. Yeah, you're in good company. <laughs> well, guys, let's wrap this up. Do you have any, um, I don't want to put you on the spot, but do you have any final thoughts or a message you want to give the audience as we close out, Colton? You too, Todd. One of the biggest things for me is just to try to, like, encourage people or just let them know that there is a hope waiting for us, the hope of heaven. However, we don't have to wait for heaven to experience that hope here on earth. That's something that I've had to learn because for the longest time I was really mad that God sent me back. Like (laughs) I wanted to stay in heaven, but I don't know. I don't know who exactly it was. I think it was another one of our friends. Um, his name was Ron, and he kind of helped me, like, flip it on its head because for the longest time, I was just really mad. I'm like, God, why did you send me back? Like, I now have to experience sin, hardship, my own humanity. I have to go through all this stuff. I was already in heaven. Why am I down here? And Ron just put it so eloquently, or he just said, Colton, you can experience God down here like you did in heaven. I'm like, huh. I haven't thought about it that way. And it's so amazing because in his word, his spirit is with us, like always. And I'm just trying to remember or try to remind myself constantly like, okay, God, Lord, thank you for today. Thanks for blessing me with another day of life, another day of health. Lord, please help me to be a light for you today. Please grant me your wisdom, favor, strength, understanding, because God, I need you. And just kind of going through, it's almost like my morning prayer every day, that has helped me tremendously to make it through almost everything that's come my way, whether it's self-inflicted or if someone else throws it at me. And being able to just trust in God's character, not because of who I am, but because of who he is that time and time again, he will deliver me. He will show up. And, yeah, it's just something I'd want to encourage the audience with. Like, regardless of what situation you're going through, God has not forgotten you. He has not abandoned you. He is there with you in the trial. You know, I think for me, um, Colton has helped expand who I see Jesus to be. Um, as a pastor, the Gospels are my favorite part of Scripture. You know, I'm a Christian. And, and to read about the life and ministry of Jesus Christ, that's why, you know, it it corrects all the errors you can get into by yeah. getting out of whack, by reading like an Old Testament thing or some of the writings in the epistles. And then you can get drawn out maybe on a tangent, and, but the ministry and life of Christ keeps you centered. It brings everything back to this is, what did Jesus say? I didn't come to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. Yeah. I, I want to show you what I meant. Yep. Okay. So I love the gospels, but what it did for me is when I think of Jesus, I see the man Jesus sometimes, if not most of the time, because well, that's who I'm reading about. But in the Bible, it says, like in Philippians, but Jesus became humble and emptied himself. I mean, he emptied himself to become a man. He's not empty anymore. You know, he was only empty for 33 years, right? Mm -hmm. Now to see, is Jesus still a man hanging on a cross? Is he still a man, or is he so much bigger than that? I mean, I can now, because of Colton, when I pray, I see Jesus sitting on the throne of power in heaven where he is. He's not hanging on a cross anymore. Yeah. 
I don't see him as an emptied version. I see him as the most, I mean, he, what does he say? All authority has been given to me. And I think in the church, one of the things that you try to have a prayer meeting and no one shows up. I don't know how many churches, but as a pastor, that has been my biggest disappointment, how to change that. And I wish the church could wake up and say, do you know who you're praying to? Yeah. You are praying to the most powerful, I mean, the person who has been given all the authority by his dad, and you don't want to pray to him. You would rather be yeah. doing something else. Um, I think of John chapter 4, where it's uh, Jesus is meeting the woman at the well is how the story is talked about. But this woman who, you know, had five husbands, five divorces, living with a guy, the disciples, everyone, the culture would say, Jesus, why are you wasting your time with her? And she even said it. Why are you talking to me? Yeah. She was even giving up to herself. But Jesus said something to her that he says, this is a pivot point in your ministry. I want you to catch this. And for me, this is where, where, where I'm pivoting. He said to her, if you knew who I was, again, back, do you know who you're talking to? She had no yeah. clue. You could ask me, and you have no idea what I could do for you. Yeah. People that need to be healed, people that have lost people and are still hurting, people that have gone through things that they can't get over. I think even the church doesn't understand what God really wants to do to them to restore them, to make them whole. And we're a lot like that woman in the well. Even though we're Christians, we don't really truly understand who Jesus Jesus is and what he truly wants to do in our lives. And that's what we really want to focus on. Just letting people know, hey, do you know how big God is? And you know what this big God really wants to do for you? That's what we want to tell people about. Guys, I love your I love your story. Um, I love your testimony. And more than anything, I just love your humility and your hearts. Um, I mean, anyone listening, um, you could be a skeptic. You could you could still be a skeptic. But you can't know these guys and not know that they're they're genuine about their faith. They're genuine about people coming to Christ, pursuing Him with all their heart and soul. And uh, I mean, I just appreciate you guys uh, so much for for your time today. I know that you 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 sit in as you said like ten thousand people plus. You sold oh. 12, 12 million books. Like to 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 be on this little podcast. I just thank you guys. Well, we we enjoy it because the thing that's good for us is is to get to know people because obviously sometimes when you talk, people are just faces and yeah. to be able to know them one. And because in our humanity, it, it's so healthy to get to know people on a personal level to, to share a life with them. Now we're grateful for the big things God did, but we sure appreciate the one-on-one, the there small stuff. And, and yeah. this is, this is where we're comfortable. This is, this is us. Yeah. yeah. Well, I love it. Guys, Heaven is for Real Ministries, the, the website, is that, it's Heaven is for Real Ministries? Yep. I was on it. No, it's the initials, H-I-F-R. H-I-F-R Ministries. Yeah. But if you go look up Heaven is for Real, uh, mm-hmm. H-I-F-R we'll Ministries, link it it'll link you real quick and you'll, yeah. Yeah, you'll see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it'll be linked below. They do speaking engagements, uh, all kinds of good stuff. There's resources on that page. But again, thank you both so much. And uh, guys, until next time, let's do this. Thank you. Thanks.